Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Reverend Cindy Carr, Senior Minister at First Congregational Church, Watertown, United Church of Christ. We're a congregation that welcomes people of diverse backgrounds, orientations, and faith experiences. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here with us at First Church. We continue to worship online in order to keep everyone safe. As more and more of us receive our vaccines and as we work together to stem the spread of the virus, the time grows closer when we can be together to worship in person. Our COVID-19 response team continues to monitor the infection rates and will help us to make that transition as soon as it's safe. In the meantime, I encourage you to get your vaccines and to continue the three W's of this pandemic life. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. I encourage you to stay connected with us. You can visit our website and Facebook pages, and you can sign up to receive our weekly email blasts and monthly newsletter. We have some wonderful opportunities for spiritual growth and connection during the season of Lent, so I hope you'll take advantage of them. Today is the second Sunday in the season of Lent. The season offers us the time and the space to reflect upon our relationship with God and our spiritual journey. Our scripture passage this morning tells of Jesus' own sojourn into the wilderness and will contemplate what it means that we are, from time to time, also driven out into the wilderness. What can we gain from this experience? And what does God do with us while we're there? So let's begin this time of worship in prayer. Let's be together in prayer. To you, O oh God, we lift up our souls. To you we offer our praise and our prayer, our worship and thanksgiving, even our very lives. Make your ways known to us. Show us the path on which we should walk. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you alone are the God who saves, the God in whom we trust, and the one on whom we wait. Amen.
gather together once again in the spirit of prayer as the body of Christ, and we lift up our prayers to God. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for the gift of your son, Jesus, and for the opportunity that you give to each and every one of us to turn from our old ways and to come home to you. You have a heart which longs for us to be in right relationship with you and to simply acknowledge that we are not the most powerful beings in the universe. When we worship money, it seduces us into believing that if only we have enough, we will be enough, that money is power, that money makes us important. When we worship status and political position or our material possessions, again, we are seduced and truly the only real outcome is the diminishing power of our spirit. You speak the truth to us. You keep your promises. You watch over us. On this second Sunday of Lent, O oh God, keep us ever mindful of the wild beasts and the angels that surround us on the journey. Keep us close to you and keep us safe. We pray, O oh God, that you will use us as angels to minister to others who are also sojourning, traveling through this life in search of meaning and an awareness of your amazing love for each of us made manifest in Jesus Christ. Help us to be compassionate, loving, and to offer a word of hope. Help us to remember that unless we walk in another's shoes, we cannot truly know their pain. Keep us ever mindful that as a faith community, we are called to reach out even in small ways to bring your love and caring to all your children. Bless the work we do and the ways we share our resources so that we become that beacon of hope in a world so often shrouded in darkness. We pray for these and all things in the name of Jesus Christ, who teaches us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lent calls us to reflect honestly upon our lives. There are moments when we wander through the wilderness, aware of our own need and our sense of desolation and loneliness. But there are also moments where we reflect with gratitude upon the blessings we enjoy and we seek ways to bless others. Your generosity in supporting our church's ministries enables us to multiply our gifts and to reach others with meaningful support and a message of encouragement. I thank each of you for all you do for this church and for those we serve. We'll take a moment now to bless all that we received and all that we give. 
God, your heart is wide open to us. You have given to us freely and taught us to return to you a portion of what we have. Grant us glad and generous hearts and help us to be as open to you as you are to us. Help us use your gifts wisely and for the benefit of all your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. This is uh, one of three Gospels that tell us about this journey that Jesus took into the wilderness right after being baptized. Uh, Mark uses what I call an economy of words. It's very short and terse, but it's an important part of Jesus' journey. And we'll reflect on that in the sermon. So hear these words from the Gospel of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited upon him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. May God's wisdom be added to our hearing and understanding of these holy words. One summer when I was in seminary, I was asked to help the Vacation Bible School coordinator by looking over the curriculum and the program choices. One resource that crossed my path had a striking image of Jesus right on the cover. He had a long flowing robe, equally beautiful long flowing hair, and a perfect smile with gorgeous white teeth. I remember thinking this will be a very family friendly image and it will give kids a favorable idea of just how much Jesus loves them. But I had only recently studied more about the life and story of the real Jesus, the historical Jesus, the one who was born into a poor family, the one who lamented over the loss of his friend Lazarus, 
the one who turned over the tables in the temple because he was so angry, the one who suffered through scourging and crucifixion. None of those events was even hinted at in this kid-friendly image. I wondered, at what point do we dare to reconcile the other truths about Jesus' life? Jesus had times when he suffered, grieved, and sacrificed his own wants for the needs of others. He also had times that he laughed hysterically, played jokes on his friends, ate too much of his mother's cooking, and took time to smell the lilies of the field. All these things made Jesus human, not just divine. Today's scripture passage tells of a time when Jesus wandered in the wilderness, suffering through temptation and feeling utterly alone. Strangely, it seems, this happened immediately after he was baptized and heard the voice from heaven saying, This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am pleased. It can be confusing to consider the timing of these events. Why would Jesus be shoved out into the wilderness after having just accepted his calling to ministry? Why should he be tested and endure temptation when he was just about to start this important work? Why should Jesus have to wander about, lost in body and soul, sorting out difficult questions and faced with such hardship? Well, Mark's gospel doesn't tell us much. In fact, the shortest of the gospels, in many instances like this one, it uses an economy of words to convey very important events. Just a few sentences to describe 40 days or more of wandering, soul searching, praying, fasting, and dealing with wild animals, but also cared for by angels, all to grow closer to God. The truth is we don't know exactly what Jesus went through, even if we crave details. It was an event between Jesus and God. Lent is a time when we contemplate our own journeys in the wilderness. We contemplate the joys we have in our life with God, and we contemplate what it means to walk through that wilderness. Jesus' journey serves as a reminder that even he wasn't immune to the struggles we face. We all go through times of trial and temptation, times when we feel alone, times that we are forced to re-examine our lives and what we're doing with them. Does this mean that God has abandoned us or that we've done something wrong? No. It's simply a part of the experience of a life of faith. Sal was a man I met years ago who was dealing with pancreatic cancer. His two kids were now grown and gone, and he and his wife, Mary, were putting all their energy and time into building this legacy. He had a successful construction business, and it was booming. But Sal forgot to pay attention to some of the little things until it was too late. His cancer came on quickly and took him in his late 50s. As she grieved, I often visited with Mary, who was going through the wilderness of bereavement. There were times when she felt utterly alone. People were eager for her to get over it so they could get back to normal. But she knew that normal would never be normal again. She struggled to understand why such a hardworking guy, such a good man, would die so young. She felt like the odd one out at church and at family gatherings because she was now single. She had always done everything with Sal. They were a team. Mary shared that she was often tempted to give in to her depression. And once, she even thought of ending her own life. The nights were just awful, and the quiet was so loud, and the bed next to her was empty. But there were also times, Mary said, that she felt buoyed up by others. She met a number of other widows and widowers in a support group and they became friends. She had a cousin who had lost her husband just a few years earlier. These people understood the journey. They would listen without rushing her, and they gave her the space she needed to grieve her beloved Sal. Eventually, a Mary emerged from the hellhole of bereavement, grateful for what she had learned about Sal and about herself. As she reflected on her time in the wilderness, she told me, I loved that man with my whole heart. There was no one like him, but he took too much time for this business. We lost years with our kids, and I don't want to lose years with my grandkids. They deserve so much more. Now I have a chance to do things differently. Mary hated becoming a widow, 
but she was also incredibly grateful for all that she learned during that terrible time in the journey. Most of us will never wander in the desert or seclude ourselves in the mountains for 40 days like Jesus did, but we all go through wilderness experiences. Mary's time of bereavement was just one example. We feel alone, not the good kind where the kids are out of the house and we finally enjoy a few minutes of peace and quiet, but the lonely kind, like being alone in a crowd of strangers. We struggle with the beasts of anger, depression, bitterness, resentment, the fear of failure and hopelessness. These are like demons whispering in our ears and we can't shut them off. As difficult as it is to discern at times, it is also true that we are not left to fend for ourselves, nor are we meant to perish in the wilderness. If we're on the lookout, we will notice that God sends us angels, manifested in ways we might not expect, to minister to us while we wander. After my dad died suddenly back in 1995, my mom and I were having a wilderness experience to be sure. At one point, we were discussing an up upcoming meeting with the lawyer and what to do with all dad's suits. Then the doorbell rang. When I answered it, there was an angel at the door. Now, this angel wasn't sporting wings or a halo. Instead, she had a tray of lasagna that could feed 30 people and a plate of Italian cookies. The next day, the angel dropped off meatballs. Then a ricotta pie showed up the day after that. I like to imagine that the angels in the wilderness with Jesus manifested themselves in ways that perhaps he didn't recognize at first either. But indeed they came, and they cared for him while he wandered. These days I think about the many young adults in college or recently graduated who find themselves in a wilderness experience. Now, many people wander and search after college. It's kind of what you do, but I think it's harder now. Maybe their chosen major doesn't provide an inroad to a career. Maybe they just need a little more time to grow up. Maybe they struggle with what I call the experience conundrum. You need experience to get that job, but no one will hire you to gain the experience. Then a word of encouragement comes from someone who's gone before you. Or you get that first lucky break when someone actually hires you. You realize there are angels in the wilderness with you. You still have to take your licks, as the saying goes. You have to figure out who you are and how you're going to get through it. But you're not in it alone. And you'll be better off in the end because of what you've learned about yourself. I think these days about families whose loved ones have been hospitalized with COVID and they can't get in to see them. While the patients are intubated and sedated, it's the family members who have to wait and worry and rely upon others to take care of their loved ones. I've talked with families time and again who insist that the angels that they see in these wilderness experiences don't have wings and halos, but they're wearing scrubs and caps and gloves, and they know how to use FaceTime to make life-saving connections. Jesus' journey in the wilderness was his to experience. There's an old spiritual song that says, Jesus walked this lonesome valley he had to walk it by himself. Nobody else could walk it for him. He had to walk it by himself. The last verse of that beloved spiritual, similar to the first, is this. You must walk that lonesome valley. You have to walk it by yourself. Oh, nobody else can walk it for you. You have to walk it by yourself. These words are true. We all go through these valleys through these deserts, through these wilderness times, dealing with wild animals, demon whispers, and long periods of anguish. Our baptism and all the good works we do will not keep us from these times, but our faith will see us through. Relying upon a God that will not leave us desolate and allowing others to care for us while we wander, we will reach the other side of the valley. We will thrive again and we will grow closer to God even while we wander. Jesus had his calling in life and we each have our own. Wilderness journeys are part of this life. May you find the strength to fight those wild animals, resist destructive temptation, and ever be on the lookout for your angels as you wander. 
They just might be carrying lasagna and cookies. And in time, may you be the angel at someone else's door. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we conclude this time of worship together, receive this blessing. God sends us forth on this Lenten journey. God sends us forth through the wilderness of our world. God has sent angels to minister to Jesus on his sojourn, and God sends to us signs and messages of a divine presence with us. As we sojourn through the desert moments of our lives, May we also find ourselves bathed in the light and life of God's new dawn. Amen. <laughs>